What's going on guys, this is Luke from South Beach Sports and today we're going to talk about the Miami Heat's post deadline rotation, what it could look like, which players can play, which won't play, as well as talk about possible buyout options at the center position. So I'm going to start today's episode off on a negative note, unfortunately, and talk about the signings of LaMarcus Aldridge and Gorgie Deng to the Nets and to the Spurs. Now with Aldridge, I and I am sure uh, a lot of you guys as well, kind of assumed that he was going to end up a member of the Miami Heat. There were a lot of rumors and murmurs and even reports by both local and national guys that this signing was pretty much inevitable. I was very surprised last night um, when LaMarcus Aldridge signed with the Nets. I was, I mean, it caught me completely off guard because there weren't really that many reports or anything of such that indicated that he would end up signing to the Nets, you know? Um, There was a report by Barry Jackson that said that the uh, Heat's uh, ongoing six-game losing streak partially uh, is to blame for his switch up decision from the heat to the um, nets now with aldridge i think some of the fan base is kind of hyping up this signing too much and uh, i don't believe that he's really going to make a big difference to the nets i think he'll provide uh, floor spacing better leadership experience kind of what blake griffin is bringing but at the same time he's uh he's old um he's not that mobile anymore not saying he was very mobile to begin with, but he's become less and less mobile. Uh, and he's just a liability on defense. Uh, he cannot he cannot guard the perimeter, which is a huge problem, especially... Well, it would have been a huge problem for the Heat, as the Heat love to switch, and they love to have... Um, they love to be flexible on defense. And I, I don't think the, um, the, um, the match between the LaMarcus Aldridge and the Heat would have been as picture perfect as some he fans are envisioning i think uh lamarcus aldridge probably would have uh would have played backup minutes to bam uh probably 15 to 20 minutes at most and i i don't think this was as big of a deal as some people are making it out to be now the gorgie dang signing hit me a little harder in that i thought that well, I didn't think that, I didn't assume that Gorgie Dang was going to end up a member of the Heat, but I really thought that the Heat with Dang would have been a much more beneficial addiction, beneficial addition, excuse me, than a Lamarcus Aldridge signing. And that um, Dang is a great, not great, but he's a very solid rim protector. He can guard the perimeter, so that means he's not going to be a liability like Aldridge. And he can, which was which was a surprise to me. He can shoot really well. He is a 48% three-point shooter this year. Uh, he's making one three-pointer a game, and I think he would be a very he would have been a very very solid backup to Bam, uh, playing that I guess uh, role that they expected Precious to play. Now I'm not gonna lie, the re- uh, the remaining uh, buyout options for the Heat at the center position are quite scarce. The only uh, available option that I really like is Dwayne Dedman. I talked about him in a previous video. The uh, Some other possible um, buyout options would be uh, Kem Birch, Mike Muscala, and the biggest name left, DeMarcus Cousins. Now, I know a lot of Heat fans are clamoring for DeMarcus Cousins. Uh, I am not a huge fan, uh, even though he has been... I guess somewhat productive this year. He's averaging 9.6 points, 7.6 rebounds. He's a decent shooter. I don't think he would be a um, a, a huge addition in that he really doesn't fit. I guess a, a big need in that he's not a great rebounder or a solid rim protector, which the Heat both need very badly. Uh, I think it's a weird um, mix, weird mix next to Bam. And I, I think the Heat need a, uh, a high motor guy who can, who can give reliable minutes. That's reliability right now is the main thing. Like Precious Chua, he, he's a high motor guy. I really like his effort, his hustle. But the thing is like he's, he's not reliable in that you cannot count on him on a day-to-day basis. He's a rookie, he's very inconsistent. He, uh, Precious is very raw on offense. He, the offensive rating goes down when Bam's on the bench. And they, they really just need someone who can give this uh, give the same energy and hustle that Precious gives without being a complete uh, offensive liability. 
Now for today's main topic, I'm going to talk about the possible rotations and lineups that the Heat could throw out for the remainder of the season. Uh, I believe that the two-way players, Max Struess and Gabe Vincent, will both likely fall out the rotation. Uh, I believe that Max Struess could fill a role as a Duncan replacement if Duncan is struggling or he's having just a really rough night shooting the ball. We've seen scenarios of that where, uh, where Duncan steps out and Max steps in and fills that shooter role. So we could see some Max uh, Struess spot minutes here and there. Now, I believe that Casey Agpala and Preston Sachua will also receive spot minutes. Um, I don't think they'll be playing much of a role in important games, and I expect them to rack up a lot of DNPs come playoff time. Now, for the battle of the starting power forward, I think there will be um, a lot of, uh, not, not controversy, but a lot of, oh, should uh, Bielitsa or Ariza start? They'll both offer, they both offer um, certain pros and cons. I think offensively, Bielitsa could offer more than Ariza. Uh, Bielitsa has been a 40% shooter, 40% three-point shooter for much of his career. He's having an off year this year, but we could see a scenario like we saw last year where Jay Crowder was struggling in Memphis, got traded to the Heat, and uh, pretty much immediately became a knockdown shooter. Uh, Bielitsa is also a more effective playmaker than Ariza. And uh, offensively, the, the heat ceiling, I, I believe, is higher with Bielitsa's. Um, now for Ariza, I, th- well, I think um, the biggest advantage, obviously, is on the defensive end. Bielitsa is a average defender at best. Usually he's a, more of a subpar defender. He's not really super mobile. Ariza has a potential to guard one through five. He can switch onto guards. He can switch onto bigs. He's way more flexible. Um, I prefer... A, uh, I prefer Trevor Reza starting at the power forward position next to Bam Adebayo. He brings a lot of what Drake, Jay Crowder brought, brought last year. But I, but I still think that Bielitsa could have an opportunity to start as Eric Spolster might want to have a Kelly Olynyk type player next to Bam Adebayo. So the Heat also need to figure out their guard rotation. With the addition of um, Victor Oladipo, the Heat now have five uh, rotation caliber guards. Um, I believe that Nunn is the most likely to um, is the most likely starter right now to move to the bench. Uh, he's been playing well. He um, he had a very nice uh, game the other night against the uh, Trailblazers, and uh, I I still think Nunn will receive some minutes. Uh, obviously, his uh, his playing time will decrease with Oladipo stepping into the starting lineup. But uh, I believe that the Heat could start running more three could could start running more three guard lineups. Which, um, which I think would give the five guards, Nunn, Drogic, Hero, um, Butler, and Oladipo, I think would give them all a chance to prove themselves and an ample opportunity for playing time. Now my predicted rotation for the remainder of the season, uh, I believe that uh, the five starters will be Oladipo, Butler, Robinson, Ariza, and Adebayo. I think that provides the Heat with enough offensive ability and defensive flexibility to really contend against a majority of the starting lineups in the NBA. Uh, this will give him a very uh, deep bench in Drogic, Hanun, Hero, Iguodala, Bielitsa, and a buyout big, a buyout center, which I believe that they will eventually sign. I think that Bielitsa uh, could end up falling out of the rotation come playoff time if he's not hitting shots because he really doesn't serve much of a purpose as he could become a defensive liability. I also believe that Kendrick Nunn could also fall out the rotation, similar to what happened last year in the NBA Finals, as uh, he just could be a result of a loaded backcourt that simply uh, won't provide minutes for him. I mean, I don't think he'll jump a Goran Dragic or a Tyler Hero in the rotation, so that could be very tricky for him. Uh, Now, that's it for today, guys. I just wanted to talk about the potential buyout bigs and go into the rotation uh, possibilities a little bit. If you like content like this, please like and subscribe. It will mean a lot to this growing channel. Comment down below what, what do you think of the, um, of the potential buyout bigs, who do you want the Heat to sign, and give your predictions for the Heat's rotation for the remainder of the season. I'll catch you guys later. Peace.